Good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome. And this is a very special service to you today because it's Christmas Day. So welcome to our Christmas service here at SIB Likas. And for those of you who are watching at home, we wish you a very, very blessed Christmas. And it's a special service today because we have got a special recording just for you all, which is done by Super Crew. And we hope that you're going to enjoy as much as we did. So let's just commit this time to the Lord and open this time with a prayer together. If you're at home with your families, we just invite you to just join hands and let's um, close our eyes and let's just commit this time to the Lord. Lord, in a world where there is worry, not peace prevails, stir up that good news again. This Christmas, make it real in our hearts. And today, Lord, we want to remember our friends, families, brothers and sisters and those who are in West Malaysia who have been experiencing a terrible flood like never before. We ask for your strength, for your comfort and your peace upon them right now. And we also want to remember friends, family, church members who may be sick, who may be struggling with certain issues. We want to commit them to the Lord today. And Lord... Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. Forgive us for forgetting that your love never changes, it never fades, and that you never abandon the purpose for which you came, to save us from our sinful condition and to give us life eternal. The joy of relationship with a holy God, your birth and your death, Sealed your promise to us forever. Enjoy the Christmas service. That's the day that we celebrate the day of Christ and remember the day when Jesus was born in a manger and remember all the Christmas and remember God's remember God's birthday Amen. Hi everyone. Katie, what does Christmas mean to you? Decorate the tree, put present underneath. But why do we celebrate Christmas? God. God? What about God? Born for a baby. Born? Okay. For me, Christmas marks the beginning of God's salvation plan for mankind. He shows His wondrous love and merciful grace for you and I and for everyone else on earth. Christmas also reminds me of Jesus' selfless and sacrificial love. Hey everyone, my name is Brian and the question is asked, what does Christmas mean to me? And I'm betting for some of you, it's all about dressing up coming to church, and maybe for some of you, it's about the presents. Well, to me, it's more than that. The star that shined upon the virgin born, born without a single sin, died for ours. It's about who God gave us centuries ago for our forgiveness because of His mercy. And that to me is what Christmas is all about, the day of Christ. Take care and God bless. Christmas to me means I get to give gifts to my loved ones. Christmas to me means being home. And Christmas to me means spending time with the family over a Christmas dinner. Theo, do you like Christmas? Jesus, I mean Christmas, means to me that 
when Jesus was born, take away our wisdom. Remember when Jesus was born. Um, he died on the cross for us to take away our wisdoms for us. Christmas means that family and friends are gathering together. Thank you, Nana. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Do you think about Christmas? She just said, I don't know what to say. But that was not Shekinah. <laughs> anyway, I have been looking forward to come back to church for this Christmas. Not because I'm sharing, because any pastor can take the puppy and share the word. But let me share with you why I have been looking forward to come back to church. Nothing beats physical service. Amen. Amen. Nothing beats the gathering of the saints. And for those who are watching at home, we want to encourage you to come and join us every Saturday in church because there is something powerful. There is something significant when the people of God and friends coming together just to worship God. Wasn't the worship amazing just now? I mean, I miss singing. I usually... Yes, come on, give them a clap. Come on, if you want to clap, clap louder. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. I mean, how many of you really, to be honest, how many of you really stand up in your house, home physical service and sing? Don't raise your hand, all right? But let me be honest, most of us, we just sit down, you know, and I bought a small tambourine. I will sit down on my sofa. I'll just, chuck, chuck, chuck. that's how I worship God at home. But when we come to church, when we stand up and honour God, and to just sing, lift our voice and hands to Him, something significant take place in our lives. Amen! So this morning, we are here together to talk about Jesus Christ. Okay? And there are two parts to my message this morning. The title of my message is Christmas Responding to the Great Love of God. Okay, and I will start with the first part and then we will, I will go to the second part and then I will give all of us an opportunity to respond to the Word of God this morning. Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. We are thankful for family gatherings. We are thankful for good food. I had to force myself to run now because of the good food coming. All right. We are thankful for sales. We are thankful for you know, the gifts exchange that we are doing. We are thankful for vacation, staycation. But the very essence, the central focus is Jesus Christ. And the world today is trying to take that away from us. I believe, strongly believe that the church... Christians should continue to talk about Jesus Christ, to talk about the birth, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, especially in this season. This is the season for us to show love. As a church, we have been talking about the, the series on love, but this is the season for us to really go out and to share the message of Christ, the love of God to the people whom we loved. It is about the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? 
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of the Most High. The Holy Son of the Most High. And He is the King and the Savior who was born in Bethlehem for all mankind. It was joy to the world. Amen. That was the first song we sang, we sang just now. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Hallelujah. Thank God we have not forgotten these beautiful carols. Right? I know COVID-19 has brought disruption into our lives. But certain thing, you know, we need to be careful that we will not be distracted. And we should not be distracted by COVID-19. There are certain truths, fundamental truths that all of us need to hold on to so that we can stand strong in our faith. Amen. Only 12.5% of the people in this church are amening, amening to what I say. So I hope as I progress, more amen can be heard. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now I'm encouraged. Are you ready? Yeah. Right, shifting into gear two now. I have 12 gears today. <laughs> All right. I think it is very important for us to read the scripture. Because the scripture should not be taken away from us. So I have selected four portions of the scripture that talks about Christmas and I would like to invite you to read together with me. It will be on the screen. Let's start with Luke chapter 1, verse 30 to 35. It is about God, or to be specific, the angel of the Lord speaking to Mary, the mother of Jesus. We'll start reading from verse 30. And... The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus that's right. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And for his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Wow. Imagine you are Mary and God just came to you. The angel just came to you and dropped such a news to you. Just keep that with you. For the moment, we'll go to Mary later in the second part. Now, let's look at Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 23. This is on Joseph. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. In other words, this is how it started. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name. Everybody say, Jesus. Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God is with us this morning. God has always been with us. Amen. Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. 
Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, for all the people, for you and I. Amen. I like that. I like that. Hallelujah. Childlike faith. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased. Are you still with me? One more portion of the Bible. Let's look at Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 6. This happened after the birth of Jesus. Verse 1, Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled. I hope none of you are troubled this morning as I've been speaking about Jesus and all Jerusalem with him and assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for whom you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. The scripture, the scriptures that we have read just now, give us the foundation of Christmas. That's why it is very important for us to read and to understand the scripture that I have read just now. It is about the good news. Amen. It is about good tidings of great joy for all people, for all of us, not just for the people back in those days, but for, for all of us until today. It is about peace and goodwill toward men. It is the good news. And because it is the good news, we need to share this good news to those we love. Amen? We do not want to keep good news to ourselves. How many of you like to keep good news to yourself? Please don't raise your hand. How many of you would like to give good gifts? Please raise up your hand. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Give. Share the good news to people. Because this good news will change their lives. And it is about the favour of God. Mary found favour with God. With God, carries the graciousness of God. And God came to her and said, Mary, you have been chosen. You have been called by God to be a part of this great plan. And it is about the supernatural. Have you noticed that Mary encountered an angel of the Lord? Have you noticed that the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Have you noticed that the shepherds, while they were keeping their flocks at night, the angel came and then the multitude of heavenly hosts. How many of you have seen the multitude of heavenly hosts? I never have. (laughs) But they experienced that. It 
is about the supernatural. And I'm very glad this morning to speak to you. That some of you has, have been waiting. Have been waiting for something significant to happen in your life. You have been led to a detour because of COVID-19. For close to two years, you have been waiting. But God is about to bring a breakthrough in your life. Because our God is the God of the supernatural. You see, when the supernatural took take place, when there is supernatural intervention in our lives, our lives will be changed. Amen. Just like Mary, just like Joseph, just like the shepherds. They had supernatural encounter. Maybe you can term your Christmas this year a miraculous Christmas. Because something great is going to happen in your life if you believe with all your heart. Like Mary, like Joseph, like the shepherd. For those at home, something significant will take place in your life. I believe that. And I believe that we need to embrace that. The supernatural God appeared to them. And supernatural events took place in their lives. Angelic visitations. And Mary, Mary was conceived through the Holy Spirit. Look at it this way. The touch of God, the favor of God, the power of God, overshadowing, influencing, impacting the life of Mary. And God can do that to you this Christmas. Amen. Amen. And because of that touch of God, we have the Holy Son of God conceived in Mary, the Son of the Most High. And Jesus would come to save his people from their sins. Jesus is our Savior who brings salvation. This is why God sent His one and only Son for us. And then the throne of God was mentioned in the Scripture that Jesus would be given the throne of His father David and Jesus will reign. Do you know that Jesus still reigns in our lives today? Regardless of the challenges that we are facing, you know, the gloom and the doom and the things that we see, the negative news, the different variants that are coming. But I want to encourage us this morning that Jesus still reigns in this world, in our lives. Because the Bible says that His kingdom will last forever. Not just until 2021, but His kingdom will last forever. Eternal kingdom. Of His kingdom, there will be no end. And a core message of Christmas is the presence of God. Jesus is known as Emmanuel. God with us. God with you and I. He is always with us in our heart, in our mind connected with our spirit. He is Emmanuel. Now God does all this. Our Heavenly Father does all this because He is motivated by love. Amen. He is motivated by love. God planned it. God initiated it. God made it happen because of His agape love. Let's look at John 3.16. Very important. John 3.16 to verse 18. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says that, For this is how God loved the world. He gave His one and only Son so that everyone... See, the Scripture is very consistent. Just now we read, the good news is for all people. And now the Scripture says that the Son of God is given so that Everyone who believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. Verse 17, God sent His Son into the world not to judge the world. In another translation, not to condemn. Because in God there is no condemnation. Amen. Not to condemn, not to judge the world, but to save the world through Him. There is no judgment against anyone who believes in Him. But anyone who does not believe in in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. God gave. God gave to us. God gave to you and I because of His love. His agape love. His 
unconditional love, His love that knows no boundaries. Amen. His love that is not self-seeking, but His love that is other-seeking. He has no personal agenda. His agenda is you and I. Amen. That is the love of God. Akabe love is a distinctive quality of God. It is in the character of God to love. And we have been hearing messages this month on the love of God. If you have not, please log on to our YouTube channel and listen to the messages that our pastors have shared on love. In fact, God is love. Amen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Dear friends, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God is love. Love comes from God. And this is not rocket science. This is straightforward. God is love. Love comes from God. I want to read Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. This is what God says about Himself. In fact, this is what God proclaims about Himself when God appeared to Moses. God said, the Lord, the Bible says, the Lord passed before him. Him refers to Moses and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Our God is a merciful God. Amen. Our God is a gracious God, long-suffering abounding in goodness and truth, according to the New King James Version. And then in the New American Standard Bible says that God is a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and truth. Abounding in loving kindness and truth. The New Living Translation says this, God is a God of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. And the Message Bible says this, God is a God of mercy and grace. Endlessly patient. I love that. Endlessly patient. I love that because I do struggle with patience. <laughs> you know, I need God. And it continues to say, God is so much love, so deeply true. I think that is so rich. This is our God. Our God is merciful and our God is gracious. Now, what does it mean? What does mercy mean? What does grace mean? Okay, mercy means God we holding what we deserve. I repeat, mercy means God is withholding what we deserve. What do we deserve? Because of sin, because of the fallen nature of mankind, we deserve judgment. We deserve punishment. Because God is judge. He is the God of justice. When there is wrong, God must judge because He is just. But because of His mercy, God is withholding. Withholding punishment, withholding judgment from us. That is mercy explained. And the Bible also tells us, God Himself proclaims to us that He is also a God of grace. And what is grace? Grace is God giving what we do not deserve. What do we not deserve? We do not deserve grace. We do not deserve Jesus dying on the cross. But because of of the graciousness of God, He allowed that to happen so that we can receive His love. Grace is about God giving to us what we do not deserve. So think about it. Think about this. Reflect on this. That God is a God of mercy and that God is a God of grace. 
And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, right? Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 tells us that, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive His mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. The mercy of God, the grace of God, flow from the throne of God. Therefore, it is important for us to position ourselves well, to have the right posture before the throne of God, to acknowledge that God, Jesus Christ, is our King of kings and our Lord of lords, to bow down to Him, to worship Him, to put Him at the centre of our lives. And when Jesus is seated at the right place in our heart, when there is a throne of God in our heart, we receive the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. Maybe there are some alignments that need to be done this morning because COVID-19 has distracted us. Maybe many thrones have formed in our lives. But this morning, I want to encourage us that the throne that God wants us to have in our lives is the throne where Jesus Christ is seated. And that is where we receive the grace and the mercy of God. It is an invitation. So let us come. It is an invitation for all of us. So let us come boldly. Let us draw near, fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. Let us walk right up to Him. That is the message translation. Let us just walk right up to God, to the throne of God, and to acknowledge Him, and to receive that grace and mercy. We all need the mercy and grace of God for the forgiveness of sins, for the forgiveness of our failures, our weaknesses, and also our shortcomings. This morning, I want to make a statement. I want to make a statement for you to reflect on. Christmas lacks significant meaning if we do not respond accordingly. Christmas will lack its significant meaning if you and I do not respond accordingly. Understand that Christmas is more than just a holiday, family gathering, sales, and gift exchange. Yes, at the beginning I said we are thankful for all this. But do understand that Christmas is more than those things. We need to truly understand and embrace the meaning and spirit of Christmas. We need to respond from the personal level. It is not about how your neighbour responds. It is not about how my wife will respond to the message. But it is about how I respond to the meaning and to the spirit of Christmas and to the Word of God. We need to respond from the personal level, level in a personal manner because Christmas is for each and every individual. There is a song, you know, Christmas isn't Christmas till it happens in our heart. And that is a song. I, I'm not sure who sang the song, but I've heard that song before. Okay. So, how did Mary respond? How did Joseph respond? How did the shepherds respond? And how did the wise men respond? Let's look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. When the angel first appeared to her, she was afraid. <laughs> she was fearful because she was just a young, humble lady. You know, she was fearful. But she discerned. She began to discern. She considered, depending on what version you read, she considered, she kept pondering, she tried to think, and she wondered. That was her initial response to the message of Christmas. And then she overcame her fear. Have you noticed that fear is a common trend? When the angel first appeared to Mary, she was fearful. When the angels appeared to Joseph, he was fearful. When the, angels appeared, when the angel appeared to the shepherds, they were fearful. 
Do not allow fear to grip you. Have faith. So Mary overcame her fear. And she did not stop there. She asked a question. She asked a question. How could it be? Since I am still a virgin. And by asking a question, or by asking questions, you know, this allowed the conversation to continue. Maybe this morning, some of us here need to ask questions about your spiritual journey, about your faith journey. Because when we ask questions to the right people, of course, right, with the right reference, which is the Word of God, we get significant answers that can impact our lives, that can really change the course of our lives. Mary asked a question and then she submitted to the will of God. She embraced the word, the word that was released to her through the angel. I'm not an angel this morning. I can never be an angel. But I'm bringing the word of God to you as a chosen servant. And I encourage you to embrace the word of God this morning. Not because I share it, but because it is the word of God. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible tells us that Mary actually treasured up in her heart. She treasured up in her heart the word that was given to her and all the things that took place before her eyes. Her heart was soft and open. What is the condition of your heart this morning? Mary's heart was soft and open, and Mary kept all these things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. Joseph. Joseph was fearful, and I think he was also confused. He was engaged to Mary, and they were about to get married, and Mary was pregnant. And Joseph was planning to quietly divorce Mary, so not to embarrass her, because he was a just man. But the thing is that Joseph considered, again, like Mary, Joseph considered, that was his initial response, he considered, he thought about the things that was thrown at him, that was shown to him. He contemplated, he processed it, and then he overcame fear, just like Mary. He overcame fear and he submitted. He submitted to the will of God, to the plan of God, and he obeyed what the angel told him. And he was blessed. In fact, I believe he took really good care of Mary and Jesus. Joseph responded well. He was a part of the plan of God and he was blessed. The shepherds, how did they respond? How did the shepherds respond? They overcame fear as well. They overcame fear because some of the things that happened to them was out of the natural, supernatural. They were just doing their, you know, part of the job, keeping watch at night, and suddenly the glory of God, and suddenly the angel, and suddenly the multitude of hosts. They were fearful. And maybe this morning, this message comes to you suddenly. Do not be fearful. Because it is the Word of God. The shepherds overcame their fear. And I like this part. They searched with haste, the Bible says. They hurried. They hurried. Where? Where? Let's respond. They hurried. Where? Where? There. Let's go. They were in that region. Imagine at that time, there were no GPS. You can't find Let's Google Jesus, baby G. No, no such thing. But they searched. The Bible says they searched. They hurried. They left running. We need to run to God. Amen. We need to run to God. Amen. We have been seated too long in our couch at home. We need to run to God. Amen. And burn some spiritual fats. They ran to God. And then they shared the good news. That was how they responded. 
That what that was how the message of Christ spread in the early days because they shared the good news and they glorified and praised God. We need to come back to glorifying and praising God in the house of God. And we need to hurry up. We need to hurry up. Since now the church is open, I'm making a call. I'm inviting more people, especially, especially those at home, to come back. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't worry about the number of seats. I believe the church will figure something out. Amen. Let, let us not be limited. Let us always think out of the box. Because the things that happened to Mary, Joseph and the shepherd were things that were out of the box. Amen. And last but not least, the wise men. How did they respond to Jesus? They saw the star. Again, no GPS. No ways. They look at the stars. All the way from the east, they search. They follow the star. No grab. They search diligently. Just like the shepherds. Can you see a common trait? Those who search diligently, those who search carefully, they will be blessed. They search carefully and they rejoice exceedingly. They rejoice exceedingly when they saw baby Jesus. Ah, oh, the king of the Jews. They were filled with joy. In the Message Bible, it says that they could hardly contain themselves. I would like to imagine this wise man just crying with joy in the presence of baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph. They could hardly contain, contain themselves. They were thrilled with ecstatic joy, according to the Amplified Bible. They were thrilled with ecstatic joy. And they worship. And they bow down. Regardless of their position. Regardless of who they are. But have, have you ever imagined, you know, people of stature coming and just bowing down to baby Jesus? Just think about it. Baby Jesus. That was because they responded rightly to the message of God. And it was not difficult for them to bow down at the throne of God, the one who would be given or the one who has been given the throne of David and that this kingdom will reign forevermore. There is no end. And not just that, they offered treasures. Have you imagined? They came all the way from the east carrying boxes of treasures. No grab. No ninja king. No double cap. It was, for me, I term it inconvenient worship. But that was not a problem for them. Because they know that the Son of God was born. They came and they offered gold, frankincense, and mirth. So this morning, to conclude, Christmas is about the birth of Jesus Christ. Christmas was motivated by the great love of God. For God so loved the world, not just the church, the world. So how would you respond this morning to Christmas and to God's great love? Now I don't know most of you, not because you are wearing face masks, just that I don't know what is going on inside of you. All of us, have a different spiritual journey with God. Some of us are further ahead. Some of us are lagging behind. Some of us have not even started this journey. But this morning, 
I would like to give all of us and also those who are watching at home an opportunity to respond to the message of God. And maybe now you're saying to your heart, you're saying to yourself in your heart that yes, I need God. Yes, I need Jesus. There are just so many things that I have gone through these two years. There are just so many uncertainties that I have been facing. I'm confused. I'm in fear. I'm worried about Omicron and the variants that will be coming. Somebody posted on social media the other day. You know, they talk about the Delta, the Omicron, and then the person say, we have the Alpha and the Omega. <laughs> it's not from me, it's somebody. Amen. Jesus is our Alpha and Omega. And this morning, if you would just like to come, come back to God, or you just say, I need God, I need a touch of God in my heart, because it is really troubling inside of me. It is really confusing inside of me. But you just need to, you, you want, or you want somebody to talk to because you have questions that you have been struggling with. You need somebody who can give you godly counsel according to the Word of God. I would like to invite you to respond. As a respect, as respect for everyone, could we just close our eyes and bow our heads? All right. If, if what I have spoken this morning or what God has spoken through me this morning is resonating to your heart and that you want to respond, you need somebody to talk to or you want to accept Jesus in your heart, you want to start a, a, some, a fresh journey with God this morning, I would just like you to raise up your hand quickly and then you put it down. And after this, somebody will come to you and, and, and connect with you and to to talk to you. If there is any one of you right now, as every eye is closed, every head bow, is there any one of you this morning you would like to respond to the great love of God? Now, please quietly raise up your hand and we will connect with you. You say, I need God. I need to reconnect with God again. I need God to encourage me, to strengthen me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, this morning we are glad and we are privileged to be able to come to church and to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. This morning, Lord Jesus, we want to tell you that we love you. Heavenly Father, we want to tell you that we appreciate all that you have done, the great love that you have poured out to all of us. Lord, we want to worship you. We want to honor you. We want to continue to acknowledge that you are our King, that you are our Savior. Lord, this morning we ask for more grace and mercy in our lives so that we will have the anointing and the power of God to navigate through the challenges that we are facing. Lord, this morning we pray for your continuous protection in our lives. Continue to shield us from the coronavirus and continue to build a hedge of protection over our family. Lord, this morning, we acknowledge that without you, we can do nothing. So Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless our family members and for those who are not uh, to, able to come to church today because they have been away for vacation or holiday or in other engagement. Lord, you protect them. And Father, we just thank you 
for your word this morning. So Father, we just commit everything into your mighty hands. In the name of Jesus, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let us give God the glory. Thank you. It's a pleasure speaking to you and for some of us who are visiting us for the very first time, please stay back. We would love to connect with you and do join us for our physical service. We are having our service every Saturday, 5 p.m. and you are always welcome to be a part of us. Thank you very much. Have a good day and blessed Christmas to you. God bless.